it's early, early in the morning. And I'm off to see the wizard. Head east to town. Whoa, 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 whoa. Easy there, Nelly. As I was saying, I'm heading east to town called West. Times like this, all I can say is, well, thank God Cumbies is open 24 hours a day. My voice is almost back to normal, which has me very, very happy. Quite pleased with that. <sighs> Jesse's anniversary present came in, which is great. And uh, at this point, I am just waiting on a big Christmas present, which, uh, according to the website, has shipped. They gave me a tracking number, but the tracking number goes to UPS, and well, so far the tracking number is not working, but. I think the originally it had told me that it would be here um, by December 4th. So I just hope it's you know properly packaged so it doesn't get damaged by the people moving it or by the uh, <coughs> not so great weather. I'm sure it'll be fine. Did I mention that I got the call to head in at 3.30 in the morning? coffee you break my balls Stop breaking my balls man breaking my balls let me just sit over there and watch like a fucking creeper god damn yeah watch this motherfucker Lunchtime now. Stuff is still going on. Looks very busy out there on the street. So I don't really want to leave to go get food. I also uh, honestly really don't want to spend the money. So dipping into my trail mix here and that's going to be my lunch. Good old great value. <laughs> Reuse my coffee cup from this morning. Lunch of the cheap and stranded. Lunch is over. <sighs> A lot of moving and shaking going on out there. Got that feeling like things could, uh, I could get that wrap it up cue at any moment. I guess we shall just have to see.
What is today? Today is Saturday. Survivor Series was uh, a week ago. Enjoyed that show. No. Till the last couple of minutes, that is. No. I was happy. We got the return of Randy Orton. Awesome to see. Uh, Cody's team was victorious in war games. Not a big fan of the War Games match. Um, never really have been. Uh, personally, I, I would prefer to see the old five-on-five five elimination tag matches come back, but this is this is the thing they're doing these days. So. That's just my personal preference. There's nothing wrong with the War Games match. It's just not my cup of tea, but I can... I could appreciate it nonetheless. And they did. You know, the match went well. I liked the uh, I liked the tease of the cash in. That was uh, that was pretty cool. And disbelief struck me. I honestly never thought I'd see that man on a WWE stage ever again. And I cannot remember the last time. I was this disappointed in the WWE. You know, you've heard me complain about people on here before. You've heard me talk about people I don't like. People like Roman Reigns. People like Seth Rollins. I don't like them. People like Logan Paul. Oh God, do I loathe Logan Paul. There is no one active in wrestling right now that I despise more than CM Punk. I was not, uh, I was not best pleased to see him. Matter of fact, I think Punk makes the, yeah, 
Punk makes the list. He, he makes the top three of my all-time most despised individuals in wrestling. Actually, no, he makes the top two. There's only one person to, that I am aware of to ever exist in the world of professional wrestling that I despised more than CM Punk. That was Brett fucking Hart. But neither here nor there. I'm not talking about Brett Hart. You know, everybody was happy when Triple H took over. I was worried. I was a little worried about what decisions Hunter might make. So I didn't have a great opinion of Hunter, which is hard for me because I'm a big fan of his best friend. I used to be a big fan of Hunter. Then I met Hunter. And that could have gone better. You know. Yeah, some of that's on me. I probably could have handled myself better. In my defense, I was a little surprised. Uh, you know. But neither here nor there. Wasn't a great interaction. It wasn't terrible. So don't fucking make anything big out of it. You know. Um... I, I was worried about what he may do. And now I am convinced that I had, you know, I had cause to be worried. How, how do you do this? This is a guy that your company took and elevated to superstar status. You made this grease ball. He would have been nothing but a tattooed, greasy haired punk running around the indie circuit if you hadn't signed him and then elevated. So WWE made CM Punk, and if you disagree with that, you spend too much time in the uh, internet wrestling community and not enough time in the real fucking world, okay? WWE made CM Punk. He would not have been a superstar without them. Okay, so there's that. So you made this guy. Okay? He gets a bug up his ass, gets all pissed off, starts having a piss poor fucking attitude all the goddamn time. To the point where you have to fucking let him go. Because his he's so goddamn toxic to have around and you don't know what he's going to do. He creates a toxic work environment. So you fire him. Okay? You, you terminate his contract. Okay. He then goes on a tour. He then goes on, you know, a, a couple year fucking uh, PR tour, if you want to call it that, where all he does is trash your company, tell, tell, very um, accusatory stories that, as it would turn out, were mostly false. Okay. So he lies about your company, insults, and tries to tear you down. Because that's the only way to keep himself up. Okay. Then, 
when he finally runs out of money because he couldn't fucking hack it in the UFC and apparently couldn't do anything else to fucking make money. I mean, people are only going to pay you to come on the radio and bitch so many times, you know? Then, so then he goes and he works for, he, he re-debuts for uh, the number two company. And they are the number two company. By a fucking lot, mind you, okay? Uh, you know, AEW's fucking ratings, their, their fan following, it's lower than NXT's. And NXT's number, so WWE occupies the top three spots in the world of wrestling. Raw, SmackDown, NXT. At this point, it might be SmackDown Raw NXT. I'm not sure. But the point is, is AEW, it's the number two company, but it's the number four show. So, that being said, he goes there. So, whatever gravitas that may have come with uh, him coming back to professional wrestling, he decided to cash that in on a company other than yours. Now, bear in mind that all of that gravitas is actually created by you because without the do it's created by the WWE because without the WWE, he would have been nothing, nothing. So then he shows up in AEW and he wants to be big dog on fucking campus. And the guys who actually created that company, they weren't having it. They were like, fuck you, bro. And he's like, I'm the veteran here. And they're like, dude, we don't fucking care. It doesn't mean you know more than us. And to be fair, being older does not necessarily mean you know more. Being more experienced doesn't necessarily mean you know how to do it better. Sometimes it just means you got more bad habits. Just saying. Um, you know, so in either case... Then you have several fucking breakdowns between him and other members of the roster and of management, okay? To the point where he gets fired from there. And now you're going to hire him back. I don't understand it. And I, do, I don't even see... I don't even see the appeal. I don't see, like, I, I don't under, you know, I'm, I can only imagine the money they're shelling out for this guy. And I don't see where he's worth the money. You know, objectively speaking, he doesn't do bad matches but his claim of being the best in the world yeah, uh, no I'm sorry the the best professional wrestler walking walking the face of the planet today many people would say is still Randy Orton so other people would disagree some people would say Will Offspring Honestly, I've never seen an off-free match. He could walk by me on the street. I would not recognize him. I've heard his name. You know, because I've heard him talked about on Busted Open and, you know, 83 Weeks. And I've heard him mentioned. I know things about the guy, but I don't know what the fuck he looks like. And I've never seen him work. And I'm okay with that because I don't care. I, uh, I'm at a place in my life now where I cannot devote enough time to watch all the wrestling that is out there. So I, instead of trying to watch it all, I'm going to watch what is the most, A, readily available, B, has uh, the most prestigious and rich history to it, and C is largely considered to be the top wrestling promotion in the world by the numbers. So that's why at this point, I'm really just watching WWE. And if I'm being honest, at this point, I'm only really watching pay-per-views because 
my schedule is crazy. All of that being said, I'm not understanding where they think CM Punk is going to bring in revenue. The fact that this guy is a toxic pain in the ass that has trouble follow him every fucking place he goes, it's well documented at this point. Okay, he had backstage issues at Ring of Honor. He had backstage issues at WWE the first time. He had backstage issues with AEW. He didn't have backstage issues with TNA, but that's only because he wasn't there that fucking long. The dude's a fuck. It's funny. I, I saw an old clip where he was calling everybody egomaniacs. He's the egomaniac. He believes his own bullshit. Like, he, that, that whole best in the world thing, man, he believes that. Hook, line, and sinker. And I'm pretty sure Mickey Gall showed us that that was not the fucking case. You know? And I'm sorry. Like, if you want to put professional wrestling aside and you actually want to talk about, you know, some tough guy shit and who's actually going to win if hands start being thrown, my, I, I would put money on most of the people in the WWE locker room before Punk. He's just a scrawny, greasy Punk. I don't see the fucking appeal. Like, it's not like the emo skater bullshit is mainstream anymore. I mean, it was mainstream for a minute when, you know, because like, I, I you know, you had fucking what? A good 30% of fucking millennials were, 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 were hung up on that fucking skater emo bullshit. I mean, more than that had the phase. Most of the people grew out of it, though. You know, you you you, you walk in, you walk into a place that's full of millennials. Um, you know, I'm talking millennials are in their thirties now, guys. You walk into a place that's full of millennials. You look around. You're gonna see people who are, you know, for the most part, well dressed. You know, people in work clothes or you know whatnot. You're like. You, <clears throat> Walk onto a construction site full of 30 somethings. All right? In high school, a quarter of those guys had on fucking eyeliner and baggy skater pants. They grew up and they grew out of the dumb shit. Punk never grew up. Not as far as I can tell, anyways. Now, I'm working off of, I've not met, I've not met Phil. I'm not interested in meeting Phil. But based off of what I see from all the things he said and the way he behaves, I just, I feel like Triple H would have been better off Pissing on that money, dousing it in gasoline, lighting it on fire, and making fucking s'mores. Absolutely nothing of value is going to be gained from signing the most toxic member of a locker room. I just don't, I do not see the appeal in hiring egomaniacal <sighs> man children with delusions of grandeur. That being said, that's, that's, that's enough of a rant on that. I don't want to, I don't, don't want to spend too much time on it. I probably spent too much time on it already. I just, you know, it's funny. I was, I started off last Saturday night uh, recording because I was going to post a video but I ended up stopping after like the third match because uh, I wasn't liking 
I, I, I wasn't getting what I was looking for for the video, so I was just like, you know what, I'm just gonna stop this and I'm gonna enjoy the show. Didn't, didn't end up enjoying the show, obviously. Uh, I mean, I, I did until like, you know, the last three, four minutes. Yeah, so. I, I, I want to move on now. I, I, I read something crazy. Um, appa apparently, the government of Ireland wants to arrest Conor McGregor for his online uh, postings. I guess it's a good thing. I guess it's a good thing he lives in the U.S., huh? They say he can't go home again. Apparently, they were thinking about Conor. It is crazy, though, this idea that the government can arrest you for posting something online. Like, with the prevalence of hackers, like, how do you even go about proving that it was actually that person that wrote the, like... I mean, I know people who've had their fucking Facebooks and their Twitters fucking hacked and other people are posting shit and then they've got to get everything removed. Like, it's a whole fucking to-do. Like, eh. And at the end of the day, it just doesn't seem right for the government to tell you what you can and cannot say. Even if the idea is bad, you need to let that bad idea sit out there so people can see it and see that it's a bad idea. Because it, it, it's like, if you come in and you tell people you can't do that, yeah, you, you've got people out there that are gonna be like, okay, okay. Okay. And then you got your other people. Your people who are going to go, oh, yeah? Or what? And they're going to, and you're going to say, or else. And they're going to say, fuck you. Not, not everybody is, uh, not everybody is cut out to, you know, <coughs> just sit in the corner and do as they're fucking told. Oh. So, I, uh, I did not watch the Marvels, but apparently, uh, according to According to ticket sales, it's fucking terrible. So, uh, <laughs> I, honestly, I didn't really expect it to be any good. So, I'm, I don't think I'm missing anything. The one good thing I did, the one thing I did here that I would have been interested to see, but I can hear about it after the fact, so it's okay, is uh, that whole post credit scene where they had K Kelsey, G Kelsey Grammer back as Beast. Which is great, uh, you know, K K Kelsey Grammer as Beast, that was inspired casting back in X-Men The Last Stand. And listen, X-Men The Last Stand is a terrible movie. It's horrible. But without a shadow of a doubt, the highlight of it was Kelsey Grammer and his portrayal of Hank McCoy. Unbelievable. So good. Um... And it's a shame we didn't get more of that. Because because he was fantastic. Who knows? Maybe we will get more of it. Maybe, maybe he will be the beast for, you know, the MCU at large. That'd be pretty cool. I, I'd be cool with that. saw a trailer, apparently they're doing another, they made another Aquaman film. I don't 
get it. I do not understand what DC is doing. We're building a cinematic universe. Oh shit! Well, no, we're not. We're not building a cinematic universe. We're we're doing we're we're doing this now. We're recasting. We're gonna do this over here and that over there and and then, oh, but we're gonna add to the DCEU with this film. But this film is not part of it. Well, what the fuck are you doing? Like if you're gonna fucking wipe the board, just wipe the fucking board. You know, like, I, I, I do not know. I, I don't know. Uh, um, listening to a podcast earlier, I like the uh, History That Doesn't Suck podcast. I does deep dives into uh, periods of history. Last several, last dozen or so that he did, they uh, they were deep dives into World War One. It's funny. Everybody always talks about World War Two, and not a lot of people talk about World War One. But World War One was a fascinating period in time. Uh, you know from a geopolitical standpoint to a military standpoint you know I mean World War One was really the birth of the US military as we know it today um, in so many ways and it is it's just it was so fascinating to to get that deep dive into that because you know I don't know what it's like in other other countries, but here in America, man, they don't teach us dick about World War One. We barely cover World War One at all. You grab, mo you pull most Americans off the street and ask them what started World War One. They're not gonna know the answer. Now, there's quite a few that'll tell you that it was the assassination of Arch Archduke Ferdinand, whatever the fuck his name was. Okay, yes, there are plenty of people that know that, but the majority of Americans don't know that. And even less Americans know why the U.S. actually got into the war, which is because I wrote our, our ships, our merchant ship, our merchant ships kept getting sunk by freaking uh, German submarines. But like, there's just so much detail and there's so much to it. And this is the problem with the try this is the problem with the way history is taught because we skim over events and we skim over events and events are so much more complicated than the two paragraphs that they get in the fucking history book the history textbook rather there's so much more to it I wish more people cared about history. Oh. I saw an interesting uh, video. taken from a train in Colorado supposedly showed a Sasquatch. Let me start this by saying that I have no doubt in my mind that Sasquatches exist. That being said, the thing in that video wasn't one. Dollars to donuts, I'd say that was a guy in a suit. The movements were very awkward. You know, it wasn't, and it wasn't just the way it was behaving. 
it, it just it, it didn't match up with uh, what most reports show Sasquatch behavior to me. I uh, I actually I, I I tend to agree with um, with Wes Germer, who uh, he thinks that it's a um, he thinks that that is a that was set up for by the train company or to try and drum up business because it's a it's like a scenic train thing so you know now the people who took the video they they may not be in on it but the guy in the suit being there um is it's probably done to drum up business would be my guess um, I mean it, it looked like a Chewbacca it looked, it looked like a Chewbacca costume you know without the fucking bandolier so I just I remember when I first saw it this was, I first saw it a couple months ago and I was like eh, I don't know about that I don't feel right something's not right about that my bullshit meter's going off but I'm not can't put my finger on it and then I heard Wes suggest that it was a, you know, marketing ploy. And honestly, it makes sense. You know, that makes the most sense. Neither here nor there. Having to postpone the... Uh, the writing of my book further. Not the writing, the publishing. The book's written. What the fuck am I saying? Having to uh, postpone the publishing of my book further. I was putting money. Uh, I was putting money aside um, with the hopes of doing a doing publication this winter. And. Uh, I got the money. That's not the problem. Problem is my roof sprang a leak. <laughs> oh, for fuck's sake! The joys of home ownership. Yeah, no, my roof sprang a leak, and uh, so that money plus a whole lot more that I got to come up with uh, before spring. I, I've got the got the roof doctored. It's gonna make the winter, but this spring I need a roof. So. <laughs> So there goes my book money. Oh, I gotta fucking love it. Update on uh, Jesse's big uh, Christmas present. It'll be in. It's supposed to be delivered December seventh.
this one day at a time, right? Some days really miss wrestling. No, I, I should rephrase that because I didn't I didn't actually ever have a match. I was just training. I was in school. I guess I should say some days I really miss the ring. to it late and it would have been irresponsible of me to try and stay. I suppose everything happens for a reason. Curious to see what happens as far as uh, cross promotions with UFC and WWE now that they're both under the same umbrella. I, uh, I I don't I don't think it'll be an instance where we're seeing it at live events or anything. But it would be kind of cool if you know. If they did crossovers for, like, say, the video games, like you do a DLC pack for the UFC game of, uh, you know, high-profile WWE superstars, and you can do the, the same thing in the WWE game where you do a DLC pack and it's, uh, you know, high-profile UFC fighters. I, I think that could be fun. It, it wouldn't. I, I can't imagine it would be an exorbitant cost to do it, and I'm pretty sure enough people would fucking download the DLC to, uh, you know, to offset the cost. I think it could be fun. I have no idea if they'll do it, but I think it could be fun. going to do another Joker movie with uh, Lady Gaga playing Harley Quinn. Uh, any 
didn't even watch the first Joker movie. I, uh... Joker doesn't need an origin story. We don't need to know where he came from. We don't need to give reasons for what he does. That's doing that you miss the entire point of the character, in my opinion. I just don't I don't understand how how Warner Brothers and DC could have screwed this up. I mean, they had the perfect opportunity. They had just done Man of Steel. The next place to go after Man of Steel should have been Flash. And you tie it together at the end with Clark Kent meeting Barry Allen. You know, having Henry Cavill come in for like the last scene to tie it together. And, you know, build slowly. They tried to build so did such a poor job of it. <clears throat> they sh after that, they should have done Man of Steel 2. They could have introduced Wonder Woman in Man of Steel 2. with Aquaman. They could have used Amanda Waller, you know, as the thread tying everything together. I mean, or, or a different, you know, uh, authority type figure to tie it all together. Fuck, you could have used Alfred or Dick Grayson to tie it all together. And then come in at the end with fucking, you know, Batman. And then bring them together as the Justice League. Like, they did a fucking Justice League movie before Aquaman, Flash, or Wonder Woman got standalone films. Fuck, Batman didn't even have a standalone film. It was so rushed. It was ridiculously rushed. <clears throat> it was so poorly done. Like, look at the way Marvel did it. Marvel took their time. They built a world. You know, like... DC could have just fucking... They literally could have knocked off Marvel's formula and they would have had success. But no. They decided they wanted to catch up. Not build slowly, but catch up. Well, when you, in an effort to catch up, you didn't build slowly and carefully, you built haphazardly and quickly, and everything fucking falls apart.
So apparently Derek Chauvin got stabbed in prison. Which I find odd, because normally when a cop goes to prison, they put him in PC so that the inmates can't get to them. Uh-oh. Uh I gotta take a phone call. Well, that was a nice phone call. Got to talk to my boy. And my wife. Yeah. Yell at the older kids for acting like animals. But uh, I just got the word, so I gotta go ahead and power all this down. All my uh, my my game here and my uh, TV and whatnot, because I'm gonna be going offline. So that's enough ranting from me, I suppose. getting much more out of this. Well, that's got to be a wrap on today. <sighs> and get up and do it again tomorrow.